Um, I wanted to kind of go back to the question I asked in our first attempt to do this, where I was streaming, I guess, on my personal page or anywhere like that. And I think it's related to all this. And that is the idea of a manifest, being a woman and being a manifester and for, you know, the energy of a manifester for those who are not aware, um, manifester only 9% of the population and you're pretty much here to experience rejection, right? Cause you're here to just start things and start things and have no attachment to whether or not they go anywhere. In a lot of cases, you're here to initiate and form and like get on with your life. And the not self of the manifester is anger and women are not meant to do any, in, or I shouldn't say meant to are conditioned to not do any of those things in society. Then you add on the layer of being a black woman who we have this stereotype of the angry black woman that um, anytime a black woman shows any kind of anger, it's so right. It's yeah. so I'm just wondering if you can speak a little bit to all of that in your deconditioning process. Oh yeah. Like, so <laughs> It's, and it's, that's pretty much the rest of the show. No, I'm just right. kidding. <laughs> right? Okay, there, there is a lot. And I will kidding. say that it's, it, this is a really important conversation. So first, um, I started an organization called Mana Sisters. And really, it started off as a Facebook group. We've done retreats. We do like online events and things like that. And I do that because, you know, like I said, when I started studying human design, um, I didn't feel a very, like it, there wasn't a lot of information. And even in the spaces where I could get information or could get interaction, like in Facebook groups, um, it was overwhelmingly like not, no color. Like everybody was, I mean, and not just no color. It was like, they were European. It was like, there was a lot of um, cultural bias. Oh, you're an American, you're from the US. Oh, and you're also like, it was just very strange coming into the space. And then, um, taking it a bit further when you're looking at some of the original materials and you're looking at you know what what is told to manifest your women there's like just a few paragraphs and basically one of the things Ross says yeah I kind of don't know how women uh, manifest women do it and then he just kind of moves on you know I feel bad for a manifest woman I'm like okay well why why do you feel bad and I then had to start looking at my own life because um, there are a lot of societal expectations and gender roles around women and, you know, from culture to culture, it's different, but across the world at this time, there are a lot of kind of similarities. Women are supposed to be nurturing and kind and loving and giving. And in a lot of ways, the manifesto woman, woman has to reject many of those archetypes um, to not do them as they are modeled out in the world, right? So I can be quite nurturing but my nurturing will not look like the nurturing of someone who's going to be able to show up for you <laughs> like I can't be there because energetically um my I don't have control over how my energy works you know once I had to release the idea that I have control over how I show up then all the mental stimulation around those gender roles kind of fell off because I I realized like I was I was faking response. And when you're faking response, what you're faking is a, it's a, the generator response is such a deep and beautiful process, right? It's something inside of the generator recognizes or responds to something outside of itself. And it opens up a well of energy. And this well of energy is, it is the generator's birthright. So I'm a manifester. So in, in op, being opposite of that, what happens is I have to fake it out. I fake it up with my personality, right? And I fake like I'm opening up an endless well of energy that's going to be enthusiastically there to respond to something. And it's a lie. And I feel that lie in my body as anger. It's unraveling my DNA. <laughs> it's harming me to the core. And until you can realize that and like actually accept that. And like I said, you know, there is grief here. There's grief in that I don't have that access, but then there's joy in the fact that I have a different job to do. So it's not like I don't have a purpose. It's just, I've been misused because of, you know, these expectations, you know? So uh, I had to 
I guess as a, as a manifester, accept the fact that yes, I do have this aura. The aura of the manifester is like opaque. You can't really see through it. Partially because there's some secret stuff happening down here. Don't worry about it. It's not your business yet. <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> One of, it's like a little bit secret back there. Um, it's even a secret to me though. So how about that? Um, I would love to tell you that as a manifester, I actually know what I'm going to initiate at any given time. Honestly, I am finding out probably just as I'm doing it, sometimes a little bit after like, oh, I just did this. I better tell people. That's kind of how things sometimes work for me. Um, and after observing not like thousands of manifestors, I've observed thousands of manifestors and I've observed my own process pretty deeply. The yang aura, this, you know, we think of yang and we think masculine because we've made those associations, but yang literally just means kind of a, a pushing out aura. It can, it can push. And it's doing that to protect a delicate process on the inside. So manifestors are um, one of two types that have a, a different-ish relationship with the program, right? So generators and projectors have a relationship with each other. And uh, reflectors and manifestors are actually in strange commune <laughs> with the program. And literally, if I am pretending to be a generator, then I never achieve any amount of peace so that I can watch this internal process. So whereas the reflector is worked on by the program from the outside, the manifester is worked on from the, by the program from the inside. And that's why we have to have our eyes cast inward so that we can see inspiration when it happens. If we are not doing that, then you get a very, very angry being. And instead of, um, so anger, you know, is the, I would say that is the, the polarity for our, for the manifestor's true um, strategy, right? So you've heard that our strategy is informing and that is not true. <laughs> informing was made up because Rob was like, listen, I know you guys gotta, you gotta work and eat. So <laughs> you gotta get along with people. So you gotta work and eat. And, uh, you know, in, in a lot of ways, um, informing is sophisticated people pleasing. Um, so if you can, if you go too far, you get angry because you're from informing. Informing actually can create resistance. So it's, it's made up and it, it can help sometimes. But it, I, I personally, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I've been playing around, I've been experimenting <laughs> with how I inform. And I think informing is an art. And I, I do appreciate Ralph for, for, for making it up. But our true strategy is actually just inspired action. And Ooh. anger is the flip side, the, the, the bad side of the coin of inspired action, right? It is. The it is inspired, but it's outspired. Usually, you're angry about something out there. Well, you you were already looking in the wrong direction in the first place. It's partly why I avert my eyes. People will ask me all the time, "Did you see that? Did you hear it?" Hell no, I didn't see it or hear it or nothing. I'm so sorry. I I have myself. A, um, I have ways of getting information about what's happening in the world, so that I don't have to constantly look at it. <laughs> 